sometimes we might get a bit taken aback or overwhelmed when someone tells us that no, you have to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and immediately start your Amrit Vela. It can work for many people, but for some people, this might just push us back. <laughs> Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh Sangha Ji, welcome to another episode of Sikhandi Pagadmala where we explore the Sakya of Guru Sikhs from the time of Guru Amar Das Ji at this moment as mentioned by Pai Guru Das Ji and retold by Shaheed Pai Mani Singh Ji. So today we are going to hear a Sakya about four Guru Sikhs who came to meet Guru Amar Das Ji and what bachan Guru Amar Das Ji gave to them. So Pai Guru Das Ji says in war number 11 40 number 16 they say ramo deepa ugrasan na gauri gur sabd vichari that four gur sikhs their name was pai ramo ji pai deepa ji pai ugrasan ji and pai nagauri ji so these gur sikhs they came to guru amar das ji they are the delay sangat they came to guru amar das ji and they do a bainti ki sache paacha what hukum or what uh, teachings that you have for us and Guru Amar Dazi told them that you four Guru Sikhs, you should wake up at Amrit Villa and do your Amrit Villa for one and a half hours. Then they were wondering why is it so specific? Why Guru Amar Dazi is telling them to do Amrit Villa for one and a half hours? So Guru Amar Dazi gives an analogy uh, based on a ship. So Guru Amar Dazi tells them if you look at a ship that's carrying a lot of shipment, a lot of um, heavy weights, even sometimes if you look at a ship in the ocean, it's carrying other ships as well. Now, it doesn't matter how much weight you put on the ship, the ship will always float on water, it will always float in the ocean by four fingers. So you can keep on adding weight to it, it will never sink into the ocean. It will still remain afloat by four fingers. So we are thinking about when Guru Mardas Ji is telling this analogy, they could be referring to a smaller boat, right? But if we think about it in a bigger picture, it doesn't matter whether it's a small boat or whether it's a big ship. How much weight is being put on it, it will just never sink. It will still remain afloat, right? And Guru Mardaz, he says that in a day, we have art pahar. So eight pahar means one pahar is three hours. So we have 24 hours in a day. And we have four pahars of the day and four pahars of the night. And Guru Mardazi says that out of all the Atta Pahar, which is three hours per Pahar, one and a half hours, which is in comparison, Guru Mardazi is saying that four fingers that helps us to remain afloat on the ocean, that one and a half hours that we do at Amrit Vela helps us to remain afloat in this ocean of Kaljuk as well. Which means that all the other time, 20 hours in a day, you're asleep, you're working, you know, you're doing other things, you're driving, um, managing your house, you know, shopping, whatever, not interacting with people. Majority of our time in a day is utilized in this manner. So Guru Mardaji says that for you to do Pakti, all art pahar is very difficult. But what if you use one and a half hours dedicated during Amrit Vela for your Pakti? What this does is this helps you to go throughout your daily activity and yet you will still remain afloat which means that you will not be drowned in the ocean of Kaljuk you will not be drowned in the ocean of the Panjachor because you have dedicated that time to your Amrit Villa, to your Pakti so Guru Amar Dazi then tells his four Guru Sikhs that you should wake up at Amrit Villa and at least one and a half hours which if we think about it we have Panjabani and Nitanim that we do in the morning and if you do Sahaja Sahaja Dana it takes you about that much time and then in the evening you do your Reharas and then at night you do your Soila Sahaja then in a day basically you're already spending two and a half hours dedicated to your Guru as well so if we look at the concept of Daswand now, Daswand is basically 10% of your earnings that you give to your Guru or you give to charity. But if we look in the system of a day, we have 24 hours, which means 10% of our 24 hours is about two and a half hours. So 10% of our time should also be dedicated towards Sikhi, towards Guru Sahib as well. That way, our boat, which means that we will remain afloat in this Kaljuk as well. So that's the Bachan Guru Amar Das Ji gave to all these four Guru Sikhs. And the lesson that we can learn from here, Sangha Ji, is how important Amrit Vela is for us. Gurbani says as well, Har tan Amrit Vela vatte ka bijya pagda khaye, kharch rahe nikutte nahi. That if we look at the concept of Amrit Vela, why is it such a 
important time frame for us is that har tan amrit vele vatte ka bijya that the wealth of nam the seed of nam that we plant during the time of amrit vela and we keep on doing that which means that the seed is now growing and we is being planted and is going growing big into a tree and is going to give us fruits har tan amrit vele vatte ka bijya pag dikhai and as the seed of amrit vela of nam is growing is becoming into a tree and is giving us fruits and flowers pagat khai the pagat sudu the amrit vela they enjoy the fruits the blessings of the amrit vela kharch raha hai and then they also distribute their wealth of nam their wealth of pagti to those around them which means that someone comes with their dukh you know when someone comes with the dukh to you and they say can you help me do ardas so my dukh goes away the question here sangha ji is we do not have enough bhakti in our account to be able to give it to someone else so their dukh goes away but if we do an ardas for them and we didn't do enough bhakti there's a very high chance that you are taking on their dukh on top of you and you are going to suffer if you do not have enough bhakti if we look at those gur six those saints they do ardas and they take the do- the dukh of the people away but it doesn't really affect them much because they have so much of bhakti in them which allows them to enjoy the fruits of their bhakti and they also can distribute it to those gur six who are in need of it as well so guru sahib kehte ne bhagat khai the gur six the pag is they enjoy the fruits and blessings of this amrit vela kharch rahe they distribute it to those who are in need they help other people nikutte nahi and even then the wealth of nam the wealth of the amrit vela is never going to deplete that's how amazing amrit vela is sangha ji so how can we start now sometimes we might get a bit taken a bag or overwhelmed when someone tells us that no you have to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and immediately start your amrit vela it can work for many people but for some people this might just push us back so what can we do now for some people uh immediate start works for some people it has to be a gradual start so see what works for you the idea is to start from somewhere Now Amrit Vela of course is before sunrise. So some people do say it's from 12 o'clock to until sunrise. Some people do it at 3 a.m. the last pahar of the night from 3 to uh, approximately between 3 to 6 a.m. So it doesn't matter but it's basically before sunrise. You can even start try to get up after midnight. See what works for you. Be it you want to wake up and then do your amrit vela and start your day so for some people they do their amrit vela then they go back to sleep and then they wake up and start their day so how do you want to do it and what do you want to start with do you want to start with 5 minutes of simran do you want to start with half an hour of simran do you want to start with one japji sahib do you want to start with doing the whole panch bhane the nitnim and do simran or do you want to start with maybe i want to do mool mantra jap ek mala che mala dedicate make a promise dedicate yourself to it but the idea is to wake up at amrit vela and see what you can do and what you want to do to connect yourself to parmatma so make this promise to yourself and live up to it as well because the wealth of naam especially planted during amrit vela is going to really be fruitful for us so pula chuka dikhima vai guru ji ka khalsa vai guru ji ki fateh you know sometimes we do an ardas and say mainu huni chahida but guru sahib knows best and maybe that's not what we actually need in that time hum ho ve lal gole gur sikha ke wah guru ji ka khalsa wah guru ji ki fateh sang ji welcome to another episode of sikhan di pagat mala where we explore the sakhiya of gursik from the time guru amar das ji and mentioned by pai gurdas ji and retold by shahid pai mani singh ji so today we are going to learn about four things guru amar das ji told the gursik that we should do as a sikh of the guru so pai gurdas ji in var 11 pari number 16 they say saharu gangu pale pagu pagat pagat hai pyari so pai gurdas ji mentions three gursik 
who came to mean Guru Amar Das Ji, Pai Saharu Ji, Pai Gangu Ji and Pai Pagu Ji. So these three Gursikhs came to mean Guru Amar Das Ji and they, and they say, Kisache Pacha, what Updesh do you have for us? And Guru Amar Das Ji then gave them four Updesh, four teachings that they should do as a Sikh of the Guru. The first one is, love all the Sikh and serve them before you eat. So Guru Sahib says, whenever a Sikh comes to your home or you meet a Gursikh anywhere, the first thing you should do is then love them as another Sikh of the Guru, have love towards them and then serve them food before you eat. So whenever a Sikh come to our house, we should always treat them that they are the very form of Guru Sahib who have come to our house. Never allow a Guru Sikh to go empty handed and then always serve them food before we eat. By Gurdas Ji in their war, they also tell us on how we should serve another Sikh. By Gurdas Ji says, Gurmukh Seva Gur Sikha, Gur Sikha Ma Pyo Pai Mita. Gurmukh Seva Gur Sikha. So it's, it's a Gurmukh, we should serve other Gur Sikhs. And how should we serve Gur Sikhs? We should serve Gur Sikhs as we see them to be our own mother, our own father, our own friends, our own brothers, our own siblings. Then we will serve them with so much of love and devotion. The second bachan Guru Amar Das Ji told the Guru Sikh is to have love pao pagata towards Paramatma's Naam. Now Pai Guru Das Ji says as well, Gobind pao pagata pukha, that Paramatma does not need anything from us apart from Prema Bhakti. Even Gurbani says as well, Jin Prem Kyo Tinhi Prabhupayo, Saaj Ko Sun Leho Sabay, Jin Prem Kyo Tinhi Prabhupayo, that those who have done Prema Bhakti towards Paramatma, they have truly found Vaheguru. Then the third Bachan Guru Amar Das Ji says is to follow the hukam and teachings of, of the true Guru. So that means that whatever Gurbani says, whatever Guru Sahib tells us to do, we must follow them. Because of course, Guru Sahib only tells us the hukam for our own benefit, for our own good, which helps us then to accept hukam and to become one Vahe Guru. Then the fourth Bachan Guru Amar Dazi told them is to not go and pray to tombs, to crematorium, to graveyards and all of these places, which means that as a Sikh, we should only bow down and we should only pray to our true Guru, now Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. Even Guru Nanak Dev Ji says as well in Nibani, they say, Dubda na paro, har bina hor na poojo. Dubda na paro, they do not have doubt in this. Har bina hor na poojo, that without Paramatma, I will not bow to anyone else. I do not do bhakti of anyone else apart from Paramatma themselves. Mare Masana na jai, that Guru Nadiji says, I do not go to all these graveyards, these crematoriums, these tombs, and I do not bow or pray to them. So Guru Nadiji says, if they themselves do not do this, then as a Sikha, we should also follow what Guru Nadiji has told us as well. So we do not bow to all these places or go there to do our dasa and ask for things. Because that means then, we also believe in Guru Sahib and we also believe in these things. And how would that work? Which means we, ha we have both our legs and two boots and that is going to cause more dubda, more doubts. So Guru Mardaji says only have full faith in Sache Pacha in Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. Now Sangat Ji, this is a lesson for us to learn as well. It's very sad to say that despite being born in the house of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, in this age of Kaljuk, we have become so desperate that when you want something to happen really fast or when we have a, a wish or a desire that we want it to be fulfilled, fast according to our time period. We do an Ardas in Gurdwara as well, but then we don't have complete faith in Sache Pacha and then we end up going outside and asking for help. Sometimes we even seek help from those who do black magic as well. We have seen situations in such a way. Those who do black magic or use this uh, means of demons, of ghosts, muddy, muddyya, they go to tombs or graveyards or you know, all this crematorium and ask help or even get things done in, in a different manner. But this is not the way of Sikhi. The way of Sikhi is you do your Ardas or Suche Pacha and you be patient, have Santog that Guru knows best. It might not be given to us in our time frame. You know, sometimes we do an Ardas and say, Menu huni chaida. But Guru Sahib knows best. Maybe that's not what we actually need in that time. We need something else. We might have to do more Pakti, we might have to wait. But it doesn't mean that Guru Sahib is not going to listen to our dasa. 
So be very careful of where we go, what we really ask for, and only have complete faith in Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj and no one else. So hope we enjoy this video. Pula chukkan dikima, Vai Guru Ji ka khalsa, Vai Guru Ji ki fateh. Just before Hodla Manla, Baba Thakur Singh came back from their tour. So I met them for the first time, sort of uh, February, March. What year was this, Gyani Ji? 2000. Okay. Uh, so Diji took me to say, be in Atatwaya, <laughs> you know, and uh, I remember they were doing exercise and they were saying to So Diji, do we exercise, Kareya Gar, you know, do this. And it was like <laughs> twisting their arms, going for walks and those kind of things. That's good. Uh, <laughs> And obviously you're scared, you want something from them. You know, people tell you little, you know, that if they give you any fruit, take it, eat it, or give it to anyone else. You don't know what, it's, it's a saintly kind of, and I remember I was in, like I said, so they're now, their rooms are below where I'm staying. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking to myself now, you know, I need to get up a little bit earlier. So we were getting up at like three, four o'clock anyway, uh, in the morning to do that sort of whole process at that time. Uh, and now I'm thinking to myself, when I woke up, I remember once I woke up at four o'clock, everybody's already up with, with Babaji. And I'm thinking, I'm walking now with my kashara to the, <laughs> you know, and this doesn't look good. This doesn't look good. So I thought, right, okay, tomorrow I'm going one hour earlier. Because I tried that running as well, that one o'clock running for a while. I couldn't sustain the running. <laughs> I used to run like three miles a day, three miles a day running. And then, and I thought, I can't do that. And I, it like takes a lot of energy. And then, because the food is very minimal anyway, isn't it? Yeah. You, it would take a lot. It was the hot day, so I thought, I'm not, I can't do that. So, but then I think to myself, I'm thinking, tomorrow I'm going to have to get up a bit earlier. So I thought, you know, part of it was a bit of ego, pride, arrogance inside myself, thinking I'll impress Babaji as well. I'll say, look, this guy's from England, he gets up early. <laughs> Some of it was that. Some of it was, you know, whatever it was. There's a bit of the, all of that. So I, I wake up at three o'clock. They're still all up. <laughs> the next day I go two o'clock. Next day I go two o'clock. Uh, so less sings are up, mm. but there's still three, four sings up. Bani Pardeya. The next, Babaji's already up. They've already done Ishnan. So, in, so then I'm thinking, so I'm at two o'clock. So then I go, I'll go one o'clock. One a.m. I wake up at one a.m. There's one person up with Babaji. That's it. Then the next day, I thought like twelve o'clock. So if I wake up at, if I go to sleep a couple of hours, twelve, five, ten past twelve. After twelve o'clock, we're up Ishnan and I went to do Ishnan got back to my sort of room at about half past 12 Babaji was still up reading part themselves so what I saw with them was they was if I was trying to impress them they were always up hmm. whether if that was my motivation if my motivation was that I want to show them yeah look I'm getting up as well they're still up as well and they would never sleep they would never sleep I mean sometimes uh, you know, obviously when they came to me, the people see they would lay with their loi on top of them and a singer would read, be reading Gurbani 24-7 and if you think they're asleep they're still awake because they would tell you everything what's going on whether Bani's read wrong wow. and they were never asleep they were never asleep I never saw them asleep and so then I started you know they started seeing me I started seeing them so we kind of uh, got to know you know that kind of thing I went with them to Hurla Mahalla uh, I was sat in the front cabin of the of the bus, you know, they stopped the cabin, they come through and they said, karniya, sarine paat karnaya. You know, so everything was about Barney. They were, you couldn't speak in front of them. If you start speaking in front of them, Barney padho galna ka karte hain. It was all about immerse yourself in Gurbani, immerse yourself in Gurbani. That's all it was about with them. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the full podcast on our second channel, BOS TV. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Back in the days, Gur Sikhs, they used to make Gurdwaras, they used to do Langar from their own pocket money. Now it's so difficult for us to even get donations or get funding from the Sangat because we are so afraid that if I give to other people, what's going to happen to my own family? <laughs> Gur 
Waheguru ji ka khalsa Waheguru ji ki fateh welcome to another episode of Sikhan di Pagat Mala where we explore the sakhi of Guru Sikh um, currently at the time of Guru Amar Das ji as mentioned by Pai Guru Das ji in the awar and retold by Shahid Pai Mani Singh ji in the apothi so today we're going to hear a sakhi of seven Guru Sikhs who came to meet Guru Amar Das ji and the teachings blessed by Guru Sahib to them so Pai Guru Das ji in war 11 pori number 16 they say khanu chura taru tare vega pasi karni sari ugru nandu sudna puro chanta par utari now they mention the names of seven guru six here and who are they they are pai khanu ji pai taru ji pai vega pasi ji pai ugru pai nandu sudna pai puro ji and pai chanda ji so these seven guru six they came to the sharan guru amar das ji they bala de fateh and matha take at the charan of guru sahib so guru amar das ji addressed the seven guru six and told them ki sangat ji that there is nothing greater in this world than doing seva of guru six if you serve the guru six with love and devotion the blessings that you get from this is equivalent to conducting a jagga so you might have heard the word or the term jagga or yagga before now yagga is a sacrificial ceremony or just a ceremony in which one does something or sacrifices something or conducts his yagga for a certain amount of days and certain amount of part is being done or you feed a certain amount of people for certain days something that you do in order to get something in return So kings back in the days they used to do jagga such as asmed jagga which is one of them in which where kings they would sacrifice an animal they would feed the brahmans and they would conduct this jagga for a certain amount of days or certain period so that they can rule over other kingdoms they can win battles or they can you know further their raj Now Guru Sahib says for us Sikh we don't do those kind of jagga anymore. So what is our jagga? Our jagga is basically when we sacrifice our own selves for somebody else. So when we do seva of other Guru Sikhs we are also giving our time, we are giving our physical energy. But this doesn't mean doing something out of just duty or responsibility or because someone told us to do something guru sahib says here that the key to serving guru sikhs is with love and devotion seeing the other person as the sick of guru sahib seeing the other person as my own brother my own father my own mother my own sister my own relative my friends and then serving them with love then guru sahib says if you serve another guru sikhs in this manner you get the blessing of conducting a jagga you get wealth not just in this world but you also get a lot of blessings and fruits in the next world as well when we leave this world lok sukhi par lok suhele you know when we say that in this lok in this world we are sukhi as well guru sahib says by serving in other guru sikh in the next world also we will also get fruits and blessings for the seva we have done now gurbani says as well khave kharche ral mil pai totna aave vad do jaye that if you eat together and kharch and you spend it on somebody else you serve another person you share what you have with other people this does not mean that our own wealth will deplete so sometimes we have this kind of mentality or this thought that if i have 100% of something 100 ringgit 100 dollars 100 pounds or anything and then if i give 50 away for example even if you give 10 away we have this kind of thought that oh i'm only left with 90 and i can't do certain things you know i i need that extra money but we don't understand guru sahib says that if you give your 10% away guru sahib gives you tenfold back what you actually deserve so gurbani says khave hai kharche that you also enjoy but you also share and spend it for on other people on your guru on the sangat doing charity tot na aave vad do jaye guru sahib says that your wealth will never deplete you will be never lacking of anything vad do jaye which means that if you give to others your own wealth will increase by tenfold 20fold 100fold guru sahib will keep on giving back to you so sangat ji the lesson we can learn from here is that back in the days guru sikhs they used to make gurdwaras they used to do langar from their own pocket money now it's so difficult for us to even get donations or get funding from the sangat because we are so afraid that if i give to other people what's going to happen to my own family or to my own uh, children that i need that money for myself for my family for my own survival but guru sahib says the key to having more is actually giving more and the wealth that we keep in the bank or we just keep it in one place something that's stagnant is only going to attract 
mosquitoes, flies and something like that which is always stagnant is just going to rot and die. So even money, we, our Gursikhs back in the days, my grandfather and all the Pranay Gursikhs, they used to say that Maya hatandi mal hundi ya. That Maya, the money that we have is just this mal, this dirt in our hands, which means that you always wash it away. You don't keep that mal in your hand, you know, which means that if money comes in your hand, you spend it on other people. And then next thing you know, you have more money coming in and you spend it even more and Gursikh keeps on giving you even more. So don't be afraid to give your daswanda, don't be afraid to share what you have with other people because Guru Guru Sahib will only give you back in many, many different ways. So, Pula Chokandi Kima, Vai Guru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vai Guru Ji Ki Fateh. Now, whatever challenges we have in our life, we will find a way to get there. And that's what Sankat is for to inspire us, motivate us. And this is what love is. That even you're, you're cut, you're destroyed, you're being tortured. You're going through so much of dukkha and challenges, but because your love for Guru Sahib is so deep, it doesn't matter what, wherever you are, whatever you're going through, you will find your way to be with Vai Guru. No one has ever loved us more than Guru Gobind Singh did. I can vouch for this, that with whatever situation you're in, you're a Munna, you're an Amritari, you've done pops in your life, don't care about it. There's one person who really loves you and that's Guru Gobind Singh. You can rely on him, don't worry about it. What stands out for me the most out of this camp, there's many things, but something my sister Gorpreet Kaur said, even whilst having fears, you still go forward and take that step. There's so much energy and power in this darbar. Right in this moment, Guru Sahib is cutting away the bondages and the bandhan and the struggles that you need cutting away. It's happening right now. Right now, Sadhguru Sikke Bandhan Kaate, the Guru are giving you a new set of eyes. The Guru is taking away your old eyes. The Guru is giving you eyes of prem, eyes of love. Your eyes that are filled with prem, eyes that only see a sister and only see a brother. And Sikhi is based on that action. It's what you do, not what you get caught up and think about doing or say you're going to do. It's what you actually do. Anything you ask from our Guru, any way you see the Guru, you, you, you will receive that from the Guru. If you come to the Guru's house as a lover, you will receive more love than you even know what to do with. If you come as a musician and a poet, you will be drowned in the magic of Girtan, drowned in Raag, drowned in the poetry of Gurbani. If you come as military, you will see Guru as your general. And when you come in the Darbar, you'll be strict to attention. You'll come with your uniform, your Kumar Kazatai, everything on point. If you come as a child, then Guru Sahib will be your father. Guru Sahib will give us everything. We need discipline, Guru Sahib will give us that discipline. Through Gurbani, they will shake us and tell us, wake up. Bhai Jagraj Singh led the way. People looked at him like crazy. Like, what's he doing making all these videos? And he done so much save across the world because he just stepped out of the comfort zone. In love, drenched in love. We're all in that same love story. Our love story is personal with the Guru. How we love the Guru, let's spread that to others. जमिया पोत पगत गोबिंद का प्रगटिया सब में लिखिया तुरका वाहे गुरु जी का खालसा वाहे गुरु जी की फतेह तन तन बाबा अजीत सिंह जी दसवें बादशाह दे सब तो बड़े फरजंद जिन्ना दा जन्म सन 1687 ईस्वी नु पाउंटा साहिब विखे होया माता सुंदर कौर जी नु आप जी दी माता होण दा सुभाग प्राप्त होया जिस समय बाबा अजीत सिंह जी दा जन्म होया उस वक्त गुरु गोबिंद सिंह जी महाराज ने पंगाणी का युद्ध जितया सी ता बाबा जी दा नाम भी रखया गया अजीत सिंह छोटी ही उम्र विच गुरबाणी प्रति आप जी पूरी श्रद्धा रखते सन गुरुस्वारी शस्त्र तारी होंदी सिखलाई आप जी पिता साहिब जी दी निगरानी हेठी होई 
ਆਪ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਪਹਾੜੀ ਰਾਜਿਆਂ ਨੇ ਕਿਲਾ ਨਿਰਮੋਗੜ ਦੇ ਹਮਲੇ ਦਾ ਜਵਾਬ ਬੜੀ ਹੀ ਨਿਡਰਤਾ ਨਾਲ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਛੋਟੀ ਉਮਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਜੰਗਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਜਿੱਤ ਕੇ ਜ਼ਾਲਮਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਭਾਜੜਾ ਪਾ ਦਿੱਤੀਆਂ ਸਨ ਉਮਰ ਦਾ ਕਾਫੀ ਹਿੱਸਾ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਪਿਤਾ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਸੰਤ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਨੰਦਪੁਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਵਿਖੇ ਬਿਤਾਇਆ ਚਮਕੌਰ ਦੀ ਗੜੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਬਹਾਦਰੀ ਦੇ ਜੌਹਰ ਵਿਖਾਏ ਦਸਵੇਂ ਪਾਤਸ਼ਾਹ ਦੇ ਵੱਡੇ ਪਰਚੰਦ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਜਨਮ ਦਿਹਾੜੇ ਦੀਆਂ ਆਪ ਸਭ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕੋਟਾਨ ਕੋਟ ਵਧਾਈਆਂ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਕੀ ਹਾਲ ਚਾਲ ਹੈ ਆਈ ਹੋਪ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਵਧੀਆ ਹੋਵੋਗੇ ਅੱਜ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜਾਦਾ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਬਾਰੇ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਜਨਮ ਸੀਗਾ ਉਹ ਅਸਲ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਹੋਇਆ ਸੀ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਅਜੀਤ ਹੀ ਕਿਉਂ ਰੱਖਿਆ ਤੇ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਰੱਖਿਆ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਕਿੰਨੀਆਂ ਜੰਗਾਂ ਲੜੀਆਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਜੀਵਨ ਕਾਲ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਪਹਿਲੀ ਜੰਗ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਲੜੀ ਤੇ ਉਸ ਟਾਈਮ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਉਮਰ ਕਿੰਨੀ ਕੁ ਸੀ ਕੀ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੁਝਾਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੁਰਾਵਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਬਾਬਾ ਫਤਿਹ ਸਿੰਘ ਇਹ ਚਾਰੋਂ ਸੱਕੇ ਭਰਾ ਸੀ ਜਦੋਂ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਸ਼ਹੀਦੀ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਆਖਰੀ ਜੰਗ ਵਿੱਚ ਚਮਕੌਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦੀ ਜੰਗ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਸ ਟਾਈਮ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਸਰੀਰ ਤੇ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਫੱਟ ਲੱਗੇ ਸੀ ਅੱਜ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਜੀਵਨ ਕਾਲ ਦਾ ਥੋੜਾ ਸਮਾਂ ਕੱਢ ਕੇ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਗੌਰਵਮਈ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਨਜ਼ਦੀਕ ਕੀ ਤੋਂ ਦੇਖੋਗੇ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜਾਦਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਜਨਮ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਸੰਮਤ 1743 ਵਿੱਚ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਮਹੀਨਿਆਂ ਦੀ 11 ਫਰਵਰੀ 1687 ਵਿੱਚ ਮਾਤਾ ਸੁੰਦਰੀ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਕੋਖੋਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਅਸਲ ਜਨਮ ਸਥਾਨ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਹਿਮਾਚਲ ਪ੍ਰਦੇਸ਼ ਦੇ ਰਮਣੀਕ ਸਥਾਨ ਪੌਂਟਾ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੋਇਆ ਸੀ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਪੁੱਤਰ ਗੁਰੂ ਤੇਗ ਬਹਾਦਰ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਪੋਤਰੇ ਤੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਹਰਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਪੜਪੋਤੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਛੋਟੀ ਉਮਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਵੱਡੀਆਂ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀਆਂ ਕੀਤੀਆਂ ਆਪਾਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਤਕਾਰ ਨਾਲ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਲੈਂਦੇ ਆ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਪਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਇਹ ਨਾਮ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਇਹ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਪਿਆ ਹੁਣ ਆਪਾਂ ਉਸ ਤੇ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਇਹ ਗੱਲ ਹੈਗੀ ਉਦੋਂ ਦੀ ਜਦੋਂ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਉਮਰ ਸੀਗੀ ਉਹ 5 ਕ ਮਹੀਨਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਸੀਗੀ ਤੋ ਉਸ ਟਾਈਮ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਜੀ ਦਾ ਪਹਾੜੀ ਰਾਜਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਇੱਕ ਜੰਗ ਚੱਲ ਰਹੀ ਸੀ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਹੁਤ ਭਾਰੀ ਜਿੱਤ ਹੋਈ ਸਿੰਘਾਂ ਦੀ ਉਸ ਜਿੱਤ ਤੋਂ ਪ੍ਰਭਾਵਿਤ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਅਜੀਤ ਰੱਖਿਆ ਗਿਆ ਇਤਿਹਾਸਕਾਰ ਦੱਸਦੇ ਨੇ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਜੀਵਨ ਕਾਲ ਆ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਚੁਸਤੀ ਚਲਾਕੀ ਉਹ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਤੋਂ ਹੀ ਤੇਜ਼ ਸੀਗੇ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਵੱਧਦੀ ਉਮਰ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਨਾਲ ਘੋੜ ਸਵਾਰੀ ਤੀਰੰਦਾਜ਼ੀ ਤਲਵਾਰਬਾਜ਼ੀ ਗੱਤਕੇ ਦੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਜੌਹਰ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਤੋਂ ਹੀ ਉਹ ਸਿੱਖਣ ਲੱਗ ਗਏ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਇਸ ਚੀਜ਼ ਵਿੱਚ ਨਪੁੰਨ ਵੀ ਸੀਗੇ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੀ ਸਿੰਘ ਜਦੋਂ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਪੰਥ ਦੀ ਸਾਜਨਾ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਆ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਨੂਰ ਰੰਗਣ ਨੇ ਪੁੱਠੋ ਹਾਰ ਦੀ ਸੰਗਤ ਨੂੰ ਆਨੰਦਪੁਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਨਾਂ ਲਈ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਲੁੱਟ ਲਿਆ ਜਦੋਂ ਇਹ ਗੱਲ ਦਾ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਜੀ ਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਤਾਂ ਉਸ ਟਾਈਮ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਉਮਰ
ਜਦੋਂ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਜੀ ਨੂੰ ਪਹਾੜੀ ਰਾਜੇ ਤੇ ਮੁਗਲ ਰਲ ਕੇ ਸੋਹਾਂ ਖਾ ਕੇ ਚਿੱਠੀ ਲਿਖਦੇ ਆ ਵੀ ਅਨੰਦਪੁਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਿਲਾ ਉਹ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਖਾਲੀ ਕਰ ਦਿਓ ਵੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਕੁਝ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਹਾਂਗੇ ਫਿਰ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਦੱਸਦਾ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਫਿਰ ਸੋਹਾਂ ਤੋੜੀਆਂ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਉਹ ਜੰਗ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਆ ਉੱਥੇ ਵੀ ਅਗਵਾਈ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਜੰਗ ਆ ਉਹ ਸਰਸਾ ਨਦੀ ਦੇ ਕੰਢੇ ਤੇ ਸ਼ਾਹੀ ਟਿੱਬੀ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਆ ਕੇ ਜਦੋਂ ਉਹ ਹਮਲਾ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਉੱਥੇ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਆ ਉੱਥੇ ਜੰਗ ਹੋ ਰਹੀ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਆ ਬਾਕੀ ਸਾਰੇ ਸਿੰਘ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਆ ਉਹ ਸਰਸਾ ਨਦੀ ਪਾਰ ਕਰ ਲੈਂਦੇ ਆ ਫਿਰ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਨੂੰ ਉਸ ਜੰਗ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਕੱਢਿਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਵੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਇੱਥੇ ਰਹਿਣਾ ਠੀਕ ਨਹੀਂ ਆ ਪਰ ਉਸ ਟਾਈਮ ਉਹ ਲੀਡ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਫਿਰ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਵਿਛੋੜਾ ਪੈਂਦਾ ਛੋਟੇ ਸਹਿਬਜ਼ਾਦੇ ਮਾਤਾ ਗੁੱਜਰ ਕੌਰ ਜੀ ਲੱਗ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਤੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਜੀ ਤੇ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੁਝਾਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਇਹ ਚਮਕੌਰ ਦੀ ਗੜੀਵਾਲ ਨੂੰ ਚਲੇ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਪੂਰੇ ਜੀਵਨ ਕਾਲ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਤਿਹਾਸਕਾਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਦੱਸਣ ਮੁਤਾਬਕ 10 ਜੰਗਾਂ ਲੜੀਆਂ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਆਖਰੀ ਜੰਗ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਉਹ ਚਮਕੌਰ ਦੀ ਗੜੀ ਦੀ ਜੰਗ ਸੀ ਜਿਹਦਾ ਆਪਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਪਤਾ ਆ ਇਤਿਹਾਸਕਾਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਦੱਸਣ ਮੁਤਾਬਕ 23 ਦਸੰਬਰ 1704 ਵਿੱਚ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੀ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਸ਼ਹੀਦ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਚਮਕੌਰ ਦੀ ਗੜੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਗੌਰਵਮਈ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਸੀਗਾ ਬਾਬਾ ਅਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਦਾ ਆਈ ਹੋਪ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਕੁਝ ਨਾ ਕੁਝ ਸਿੱਖਣ ਨੂੰ ਮਿਲਿਆ ਹੋਊਗਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਗਲਤੀਆਂ ਰਹਿ ਜਾਂਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਸੁਣਾਉਂਦੇ ਸਮੇਂ ਸਤਿਗੁਰ ਸਮਤ ਬਖਸ਼ਣ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਸੁਣਾਉਣ ਦੀ ਜਾਚ ਆ ਜਾਵੇ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਕੰਟੈਂਟ ਨੂੰ ਦੇਖਣ ਲਈ ਸਾਡੇ ਚੈਨਲ ਨੂੰ ਸਬਸਕ੍ਰਾਈਬ ਕਰ ਲਓ ਮਿਲਦੇ ਆਂ ਫਿਰ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੱਖਰੇ ਟੌਪਿਕ ਤੇ ਤਦ ਤੱਕ ਲਈ ਸਤਿ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਲਾਈਫ ਹਾਊ ਬਿਊਟੀਫੁਲ ਇਟ ਇਜ਼ how amazing it is to be able to rise up in the morning and have that sun shine on your face rather than on your grave ever tried ever failed no matter try again fail again fail better we get bored of our childhood rush to grow up and long to be children again that we lose our health to make money and then lose our money to restore our health that by thinking anxiously about the future we forget the present such that we live in neither the present nor the future you already in pain get a reward for it <laughs> like you already in pain so at the end of the day you you everything is already messed up So why would you go through all that pain and not get something for it? People tend to think that they're happy because they achieve goals and that's not true. What's true is because as soon as you achieve a goal then you have a problem which is what's the next goal. And that's actually a big problem. You you encounter that as soon as you graduate from university for example. If you are a toddler, you have diaper problems. If you become an adolescent, you have hormonal problems. If you become middle age, middle age is a crisis. If you become old it's horrible. Tell me which part of your life is good. Don't make everything into your problem. These are different stages of life. You can either ride that and enjoy it or be crushed by the same thing. This is the process of life. Physical life is a natural cycle. So when something is rolling, you can either ride it and enjoy it or you can be crushed by it. It's not about what happens to us cuz things are going to happen. How are you going to separate yourself from everybody else? And I always thought any time it got really incredibly hard, I would think about all the people quitting right now and how they're going to feel in a few years, hopefully if we're alive, that they're just going to say, "Man, what if I hadn't have given up? What if I would have kept going?" Don't say what if. Please, 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 please. Don't have the what ifs down the road. You keep going now and I'm telling you, you'll be in a better place than you would be if you quit. Here's the game. Imagine you were taking care of yourself like someone you cared for. So imagine someone you care for and pretend that's you. Maybe it's a son or a daughter or a friend. Now imagine 5 years down the road. You can have what you want and need. You can be who you are, but you have to figure out what it is. What is it? What do you want? What do you need? It is beautiful because whatever you have that you may be facing
what you may be dealing with. Life is still good. Life has so many moving parts. But life is always good. Every day is a new day and another opportunity that others may not have. I have an insane belief in my own ability to manifest things. <laughs> insane belief. I think it's ultimately complete sanity. I believe we're creators and I believe we create with every thought and every word is every moment is pregnant with the next moment of your life. We all start out with a false belief about ourselves with some untrue thing that we believe walking through our lives. I'm not worthy, I'm not lovable, I'm gonna fail. Whatever your basic mistaken belief about yourself is, you form a personality around. You know, it, it, it's the grain of sand in the oyster. So I form characters that way a lot of times. I'll, I'll, I'll ask myself, what's, what's the speck of sand? Man, my grandmother died at 93, and a month later, my other grandmother died at 90. I didn't realize how quick life was. I'm like, yo, my grandmother was 93. I spent 51 years with both of them. They're gone. It's over. I will never be able to talk to my grandmother again. And I'm next. So because life is short, I don't have time to focus on what's not. I've got to focus on what is, then get up and go get it. And, and, and for me, it's like, guys, some of you in this room have opportunities that I don't have. Some of you in this room have connections or network I don't have. And, and I'm killing the game and you're not. <laughs> so I need you to, I, I need you to understand where you are. Uh, America's not perfect. I don't know if there's a place on planet Earth that is. So we're not looking for perfect, but we are looking for opportunity. And we have it. So it's like, yo, say it because I need you to understand what you have. And then I need you to appreciate what you have. And then I need you to go after everything that's got your name on it. Now on this journey of life, you're gonna face a significant amount of circumstances, a significant amount of challenges. You're gonna fall into areas that you cannot understand. And maybe it's not in the position for you to understand at that moment. Now when you start to feel that you are in a position that you don't love your life, then shame on you because your life is a beautiful thing. There are going to be so many different things that you will embark on. There are going to be so many different things that's going to try to slow you down. There are going to be so many different challenges that you must face. But instead of running away from the challenge, run towards the challenge. Be able to understand that life has meaning. It has reason. And all of these things that you may be thinking that is so hard on you. Just remember, sometimes you're going to have to go through these changes, these circumstances that puts you in a position to make you feel that you're not worthy anymore. But make no mistake, you are worthy. You were created for something. You wasn't created for nothing. Life has a gift, a gift of giving. I don't, I don't even want it to be easy. Everybody would get a PhD if it was easy to get a PhD, then it wouldn't be valuable if you could just open up the door. So I tell people, like, look, look at the tragedies and say, Yo, you thought well enough for me to come at me? Batman, you, 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 you trained in the dark. They ain't say I was born in the dark. <laughs> this is what I do. Cut all the lights off if you want to. You're not going to stop me because you got all the lights. Like, I, this, is, this is where I thrive. And I'm saying if you're a real human, because we are a little different than some of the other things that were created, we have a will. There's some things that we have. I'm like, activate it. Instead of crying and quitting and giving up again. We're going to go through pain. All of us won't get a reward from it. I got a reward for mine. Like, I have worked so hard when I die, I will physically be dead, but you'll still be knowing about Eric Thomas. The videos will still be out. The books will be out. 
whatever businesses we set up, kids will still be going to college. They'll be going to the Super Bowl every year through my foundation. They'll be taking a trip to Dubai. I, I, I you know, I tell people all the time, they're like, what, what motivates you now? Because you have what you want. What motivates? I said, I did it, but can I duplicate myself? Can I scale this reality? You know what I'm saying? Can, can I scale positivity? Can I scale getting through pain? Can I scale taking a bad hand and turn that joke into a royal flush? Can I, can I scale that? So for me, it's not, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. I look at it, game seven, this is going, this where, this where the Michael Jordans are made. This, this, this is where the Magic Johnsons, the Larry Birds, like this is where the real ballers, this is where the real ballers come out. Okay, you won game one. Okay, you won game two. Okay, we won two. Then you were up three, one, three, two, and we came back and beat you. Like, we don't go, we're down two. We go, this is what I signed up for. This is what all the weights were for. This is the eating right. This is the getting up early, going. this is the trainers. Like, this is why I went to this school. This is why I got this coach. Like, this, I long for this and I live for this. And some people, I don't know, are you not cut out for it? I don't know, but for me, when I see trials and tribulations, I go, it's showtime with a real Eric Thomas, with a game seven Eric Thomas. Please stand up, activate, Grand Slam. <laughs> Grand Slam activated in shape of ET. And it, bop, boom, it's out of here. So I just look at it as, hey, if you want to complain, go for it. I will rise to the level of the challenge.